Acting the Part by Peter James, directed by Graham Buckingham-Underhill, featuring Miss Christine Carpenter as Agatha and Miss Catherine Buckingham-Underhill as Beatrice. A dramatic exploration into realising the character during performance. <laughs> Darling, it's you. Yes. Oh, I totally agree. Mm. Shall I pop round now? What, about ten minutes? Fine. No. No, I, I don't think we should mention it to Gideon. OK, see you soon. <laughs> Darling, darling, do come in. Oh, thank you. This way. <laughs> do have a seat, darling. Drinky. Oh, how nice. Coffee. Oh, lovely. Latte. A black. Sugar or sweetener? Neither. Percolated or instant? Oh, percolated. Uh, uh, decaffeinated? Oh, naturally. Lovely. Black, percolated, decaffeinated, unsweetened. Thank you. <laughs> Super. So good of you to come, darling. Oh, quite essential, my dear. After yesterday. <gasps> Awful. We have to do something, if possible. Alone and despite dear Gideon. Wonderful though he oh, is. Oh, that goes without saying. I wouldn't utter a single word against him. What a superb track record. Total grasp of production. The mechanics of production. Yes, the <clears throat> mechanics. But. Quite, mm. but. Perhaps not so strong in the area of character analysis. Or motivation. Oh, motivation, yes. Yes. And that's a different matter from costumes or furniture. Uh, or the perhaps rather too jolly programme notes he always writes. <laughs> I'm so delighted you share my feeling that we should get together to sort it out. Well, how could we not? Our parts are, after all, quite central to the piece. Pivotal, darling. I do feel the need to look at them in depth, yes. both in relation to the play as a whole and perhaps, more importantly, in relation to each other. Oh, the sisterly relationship is in some ways a, a more potent force than that between mother and child. Oh, I do agree. A full blood relationship. And in this play, it is at work within a family situation that is, to say the least, unusual. The tensions inherent in the mother-stepfather axis are, as I see it, the main spring of the dramatic conflict. Utterly Friday! Edible! Oh, my word, exactly, darling. Here we have two sisters torn mm. between a Chakovian mother hatred and a sibling rivalry of the stepsister, um, redolent oh. of, uh, Webster's White Devil! Who has, of course, the benefit of retaining her father fixation intact. And is, in consequence, secure, whereas they poor bereft oh. souls have lost their platform of psychic stability and can empathise only with... Each other! Exactly! Driven by forces too fierce to contend with, they present to the world a basic unity, tortured, yet at the same mm. time liberated by their common insecurity. As were dear Charlotte, Anne and Emily in the bleak parsonage at Haworth. Oh, a perfect analogy, darling. Tragic. 
tragedy is so often the wellspring oh, yeah. of creativity. The cement that binds together the building blocks of character. Herein lies the two sisters' strength. Strength! How right! They must dominate the entire action. Mm -hmm. Not merely the ersatz father figure who is weak and mm. vacillating, but the mother too must be subservient to their united will. And the focus of their struggle for dominance is the younger child. Who has all the outward appurtenance to attract the sympathy of the world. Beauty, youth, sweetness, simplicity. Well, their needs and drives are tragically misunderstood and, and seemingly unattractive. Yet, in truth, they should be the recipients of the audience's sympathy. Oh, I'm sure our dear director doesn't begin to understand this. Darling, I doubt he's even begun to analyse it. He must be told. Oh, will, dear. He will be told. After the debacle of yesterday, obviously. <laughs> There will be no more yesterdays. <laughs> I wonder, darling, if it might not be profitable to, to run through the climatic scene now. It could crystallise the, the whole argument and, and through shared experience produce in us the empathy that mere discussion cannot generate. Oh, how True. I, I brought my script with me. Uh, page, uh, page 58. Yes, page 58, where the whole piece is resolved, where the combined effects of family discord, high ambition and universal scorn conspire to drive a wedge between the sisters. Threatening the central strength of their position and influence. If we could get our reading of this mm. scene across to our dear director, I think we could make yes. our case uh, ready. Oh, a moment, dearest. Should we not use semi-costume? Mm. I always feel that even a single item of dress enables one to get deeper mm. into the skin of a character. Mm. <clears throat> Dame Judy always wears her performance oh. shoes right from the first rehearsal. Oh, have you anything to hand? Oh, well, I, I have fished these out. Oh. <laughs> oh, they're perfect. Need I say, my dear, that as usual you are quite, quite right. Ready? Ready. <laughs> <coughs> it fits! I can get my foot inside the crystal slipper. Oh, you couldn't get your foot inside the crystal palace. It's mine, mine, mine. The prince is going to marry me. Yes, you'll get to the altar. It's carrying my train. Your train? Oh, the nearest you'll get to a train is being shunted into the siding. Oh, at least when I look at the clock, it doesn't stop. Clock? Oh, when you were young, they used sundial. Here, give me the slipper. No, it's mine. It fits me, I tell you. Oh, give me the 